So uh, talking about the industry, because mm-hmm. I'm always I'm always fascinated with kind of how <laughs> how someone goes from kind of their life to it's this very I've, 99% of people are only going to ever see it from the outside. Yeah. Right. And so I feel and it's probably to a certain degree, a unique story for each individual person. For my understanding, for you, it was just you were walking down the road one day mm-hmm. and someone was like, you got it. As yeah, they handed as, me a business card. Very really? professional looking. He was, yeah. you know, dressed like you in a button down slacks. Uh, he got out of his car. He handed me a business card. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a marketing executive. Um, so he wasn't just like some sleazy producer. Um, I went in and I toured the studio. Very professional. Like there was cubicles every, I would say about like 40 cubicles of people just sitting there working with headphones on with pictures of their families and, you know, decorations all over their walls and stuff. Uh, so it was, it's not, it's not what most people think of. Like they see on the Netflix documentaries where it's like a shady motel room or like some sleazy basement. It Mm -hmm. was a much more professional show. Right. Because well, so because was it a it was a much larger organization than kind of I think when you talk about the Netflix show, it's uh, uh, Hot Girls Wanted. Yes. Yeah. Which I think they've made now several things. Yeah. But yeah. Well, and that's kind of like a, a smaller organization, kind of one girl. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they all live in one house and, you know, yeah. they have one guy who's just driving them from, <laughs> you know, gig to yeah. gig. And it's oh, God, I think it gives. I think that's one side of the industry and then another side is extremely professional where, you right. know, they pay taxes and there's. And that was your experience. Yes. Right. So you go in very professional. Um, what kind of goes through your head head after you see you, you do kind of the tour and you start thinking of or what were you thinking of? Like, how, how would this uh, affect my life? I didn't think about how it would affect my life. I was naive and I thought thousands of girls every month, you know film themselves or sure. go into the industry and no one knows their name. No one ever hears about them. So I can kind of do this to boost my confidence and no one will ever find out about it. Who's, who's going to be searching for me? Uh, so that's really interesting. Cause I feel like that's, that's somewhat similar to, is it the real girls do is real girls do porn lawsuit that's happening? They were, they were, there's allegations that they were told that this is only going to be essentially like uh, physical copies in Australia. And they had the same kind of mindset of like, well, who's going to see that? Yeah. Right. I live in, you know, I have no one that follows me. No one's gonna be like, that's, that's her right there. And then it gets uploaded and everyone sees it. Yeah. But for your experience kind of from not, from not having been on a set before, what is, what is that like? Um, a lot more intimate than you would expect. Like, it's Mm -hmm. not like the movies portray it. There's one cameraman. That's it. And then you, and then two people, Okay. you and whoever you're shooting with. So you kind of, it's kind of like this where there's lights on mm-hmm. you. So you can't really see the rest of the set because it's so bright. So you kind of sure. forget that there's other people there. Um, also, adrenaline completely takes over. Mm. As soon as the lights go on, it's just like a blur. I I, could, I mean, I could see that. I mean, I've, I've only ever experienced something like that if I've gone on stage yeah right it's just this thing that i've never experienced before it goes by like that and you get off and you're like you could ask me to you know recount what just happened and i you oh it's 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 almost like not not blackout but it's almost like yeah it's just a blur it feels like it happened in the span of 45 seconds even Mm -hmm. though it was 30 minutes so you kind of don't think about the, the the larger thing because what happens with you has really never happened before, right? People yeah. say like, what do you think would happen? Well, not this. It was the first time something like this happens. Um, you end up doing the, like the now international news hijab scene. Yes. What the hell happens after, after that? Cause I know that you've talked about that you jokingly before the scene, you're like, you guys are going to get me killed. Yeah. Right. But you don't re like you didn't probably really think that, you thought maybe I'll get some messages, right? Yeah. I, th- I mean, I, I just thought there would be backlash. I didn't think that all of the backlash would be directed at me. People were acting like I was the one who came up with the concept and, sure. you know, told everyone, all right, places, this is- <laughs> get your dick out. Like, n- no, yeah. I'm not in control of that. I'm sure. the actress isn't in control of what the context of the scene is. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you just you, you do have a say if you're not comfortable with something but no one will ever listen to you if you say no no i don't think well, we should scrap this let's do how about schoolgirl? no one's ever done that before right so i 
what's the, when's the first time that you knew that it was becoming a much bigger situation? Right after that scene came out. Oh, so it was. Instant. Yeah. Because until then, no one really, no one knew. Was, but I mean, was it like a, a friend called you? Like I saw you on the news. So uh, I was, I was actually doing social media. I was their social media manager for the company oh. that I worked for. Uh, oh, okay. So I was like on the books on payroll, not just as uh, a porn actress. Um, so I was in the office one day and all of a sudden two people come into the room and they're like, this is crazy. You have all of these interview requests. I'm like, what is going on? And I checked my Twitter and it was blowing up and no pun intended. And everyone was just going crazy about it. Like there was hate, there was curiosity, there was everyone had an opinion about it. And amidst all that, um, I started getting death threats from people online who were posing as ISIS or ISIS sympathizers, mm -hmm. or I, I don't even know, but it, it was, it was really scary. And after that, I kind of like started to shy away a little bit. Sure. Um, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. But at, I mean, at that point, my life was kind of ruined. It was turned upside down. Ruined in what way? I, I knew that there was no going back from this. So okay. for like a month and a half, I continued, I continued to be in the industry. Uh, I think I shot three or four more films after that. Sure. Uh, but then I realized like I, I was never doing this because I enjoy this. I was never doing this because uh, I need or want the money because the money is shit. It's fucking terrible. So Can what I was it that? Yeah, okay. of course. <laughs> Not on my channel. No. Uh, so what what did push you into it? It was the it was attention? the fact that I was getting attention and mm. the validation I was getting and, you know, people on set telling me, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. And the attention from these good looking men who I never in a million years thought would give me the time of day. So it was I was caught up in the whirlwind of that, completely forgetting about what I was doing for myself and my future. So do you feel like for you that there it was more of these outside forces and it wasn't empowering in any way? Or do you feel like maybe in the moment you felt empowered? But I it was think it was a false else? sense of empowerment okay. because now that I know what true empowerment from within feels like, it doesn't come from things like that. It comes from succeeding and reaching a goal that I set for myself and, you know, making my fiance smile or like things like that are what empower me now. And that's that's long lasting empowerment. That's the sure. empowerment that gives you true confidence not not what I was doing before right. what I was doing before was I think a cry for help like I should have done I should oh. I should have done therapy not porn 